Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at the free tempo recording option inside the new Logic 10.7.5. This is a, a really cool tool and one that we've had similar versions of now for a while, but they've certainly updated it a little bit to make it even more useful. So I want to show you one instance that I could already think of just to get this conversation started and we'll dive in a little bit to how it works. So first of all, if you're not seeing it up here in your toolbar, right click, say customize, and make sure that the free tempo recording tool is available. You'll see that the capture recording tool, which we've used in the past, now has a box around the red dot. It looks a little different. Uh, that's probably just to distinguish it between this other one, which is the red dot with the dotted line, the dashes around it. Okay, so when I click this, it doesn't matter where I am in the project, uh, I'm going to be able to play something and then have some options of what to do with that. It's going to mute everything else. If you have all these things in your project, you could do this with an empty project and just play. But in this case, uh, we're going to be able to do this with a full project. What I want to do is I've added this um, kick sound. And with that, that's going to be like my tap tempo. And I want to just have this chorus slightly slowed down at the end. So I'm going to push play, not record first. I'm going to tap along. And then right when I want to be able to do a custom tempo, I'm going to push uh, this button. Just like that. Now what this does now brings up this dialog, which we don't have to have it show every time. We can actually set a default for what do you want it to do but I have four options. I can apply the region tempo to the project. That means whatever I just played, it's going to analyze that tempo and then change the global tempo for the project, which is what I'm going to do this time. But I could also do an average region tempo uh, to smooth it out. I could apply the project tempo onto the region and make that one actually fit. So it's kind of like doing a pre-quantization. Uh, or I can say, just don't do anything. Um, so I'm going to leave the top one, hit apply, um, and you'll see actually one thing that just happened here is it analyzed that tempo is twice as fast. Uh, and so this is one of the things that I found a few times. I'm going to undo that, um, and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go back and do it one more time. Instead of doing it the... I'm going to do more like quarter notes on that. Although I've gotten it to work both ways. Okay, so let's try this one. And you'll see now, because I did on the quarter notes, it did that little bit of a slowdown right here. So let's listen. I'm going to actually mute the kick. That synth kick. The sun is always spinning round, round the ground, round the ground. I walk away too scared to look you in the And then it goes back to the original tempo. This is really useful in certain circumstances. Uh, for instance, if we're working on a film or something, say we wanted to sync this up with picture. I don't have a really good handy movie to import right now, um, but I'll just import something right here. Open that. Uh, we're going to open the movie, but leave the audio track. Well, we'll ex extract it so that we're good to go. Close this down a little bit. Mute the audio track. And say at the beginning, I want to sync this up to a section of this, right? Um, so let me listen for a second and watch the video. So the video switches a little bit earlier. It could be that um, I want to just do a similar thing as I was doing and actually time this out this way. Right, so that's our option. 
let's apply this, and then it's gonna change the tempo to match what I just played in. Uh, so kind of a rough example, but you get the idea if you have a score written, this is a way to add that tempo map after the fact uh, and put it in and match the, the video content a little bit. So I'm gonna undo that, undo adding the video because I don't want it there. Um, but that's, uh, that's another workflow for that. When we have this, so let's actually double click on this. Um, and we can do a few things. We can go down to the smart tempo view and now uh, we can do all kinds of things. This is going to, it just gave us the help menu, which we don't need right now. Okay, cool. Um, but this is gonna be very familiar because we've already used a lot of this, but I think certainly this has been a little bit refined uh, and there are some things here that we can do to change how this works. Um, so for instance, you can see right now, um, let's scroll that back up a little bit. Uh, so it put that tempo in. So beat one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And um, even though I think we got the, the desired slowdown a little bit, um, not all of these are actually exactly right on. So um, some of these we may want to actually move around uh, and do that. We don't want to set a downbeat. We have the move marker, the scale selection, um, which I'm going to undo. Uh, we also have the scale left, move right. And we have the move all. So we could just shift everything over. So if we really want to do that, we could just move the markers around. I don't want to do that one. Where's the other move? There we go. Um, and just hit some of these downbeats. Uh, it depends. So this says beat, that's really number three, which is really further over. So we're going to undo those. But we get to go through and customize how these feel uh, when we're doing this. Pretty cool. Um, variable tempo or constant tempo we have a click that we can use as we're the, the metronome as we're testing this out. Um, we can preview it. Uh, all of these things are designed to help us get to a little bit better, tighter uh, uh, tempo as we're doing this. But the real truth is, is that the way that I showed you at the beginning with just doing the free recording lets us um, be able to adjust it in the middle of a project. We don't have to do the whole thing. We can just do that little section like I did. Um, let's do one more at the end of this chorus here, same way. Um, push play. Oh, that feels a little bit off. Let me do one more. So it looks like some stuff has gotten shifted. So we're gonna actually have to work on this a little bit. There are a few things that may be happening here. Um, I didn't notice this until I was just doing it later on. Let me make sure my flex and follow are turned on for all of the vocal tracks. Um, and they're not. Flex and follow. These ones here, I wonder if that was it. So that did fix the timing. You want to make sure that that's the case. If we're going to be changing tempo, even in a small way up in the middle, if some of these things aren't set to do the following of the tempo, all of the MIDI will automatically, but not all of the auto recordings. So 
with the audio recordings, we have to make sure that those are selected. Uh, and so you see that now we have some of those things actually being adjusted. Um, I'm going to undo all of this in a minute because I don't want to necessarily save it. Uh, but it certainly is, uh, you know, interesting to see the changes. Now, the last thing I want to look at, let's make a new project. And I'm going to close that without saving it. Software instrument. And in this case, I just want a, a piano sound. We'll do Yamaha. So there's still a few different ways of doing the tempo and getting the tempo you want. So a couple things. I'm going to set my tempo into adapt, right? And I'm going to play some stuff here. Right? So I just played something not even with a click track, not even a recording. Um, let's go into this and actually open up our capture recording. And let's hit the capture recording button. So now... And it did go off one beat here, so I'm just going to come down. Ooh, that was all the stuff I had done before. That's kind of interesting. It's all there. Um, let me play this for a second. So really, I think this is going to be the downbeat. Let's try that. Right? So some basic changes and, and we're off to the races with that. That's one way of doing this. Let's undo all of that. Um, of course, we could put this into adapt mode and record. Right? And it's going to do a similar thing. So let's play that real quick. Okay, it is what it is. Perfect performance. Um, and then we'll undo that. So now, without having to do, we can just put it into keep mode. And we can put this into the free tempo recording. Right? And now I get to choose. So I get to say, do I want to apply the tempo to the project, the project to the thing, an average tempo, et cetera. Um, in this case, let's do an average. We haven't done that yet. So you can see how close it is. So that's going to leave a little bit more flexibility in the tempo. And then I can actually, if I want to do some like smart quantization here uh, and actually change that. So I can make it rigid. I can keep it free flowing. I can add the tempo before or after in the middle of the song. Um, I can do all of these things. The tempo functions in logic are now among some of the best of any workstation. Uh, that's the truth of it. They really are good. It's complex. It isn't easy to do this. They're talking about machine learning to do this. And I think it's just a smarter design and a smarter way of working at it and remaining flexible without ruining everything we already have. It just adds some functionality on a layer that can do this. Okay, that's this feature. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.